Today, I'm going to be showing you how I'm getting 200 email leads per day and converting them into paying customers on Amazon without paying a shit ton of money. Let's jump in. So how to get leads in five steps. Part one is what I call the lander. This is knowing and serving your audience. If you just sell another plastic widget from China that has no differentiation from everyone else, this is not for you. However, if you know who you want to serve and the audience you want to build, then this is for you. Building an audience is going to be more fulfilling and it will get you through the tough times because you're making a difference in the world. Part two, traffic. We want to get traffic to your offering. That's how people opt into your offering. So this is the magic of this strategy. I'm going to show you not only how to build something that your audience wants to consume, but also something that they will want to share, give you their email for, and then also they'll buy your product on Amazon as a result. This then sends external traffic to Amazon, which Amazon loves, and they'll reward you with a higher ranking, more sales, and a monetary bonus. Part three is capturing the email. Capture their information for further communication. This is what we need to get your visitors. We need to get your visitors' email address, and then we need to serve them at the highest level. This isn't to spam them, but to provide them with more value around the problem that your product solves. The more value you provide, the more sales you'll make. The more you spam, the less sales you make. Part four is more traffic, so serving and building your audience even faster. This will help you serve them better than ever before, resulting in loyalty and more sales. And then finally, part five, I'm going to bring all this together and just know that persistence pays off. So who am I? My name is Dr. Travis Ziegler. I'm the founder of a company called I Love. We're on a mission to help 1 million dry eye sufferers heal their dry eye naturally. We're on pace to do over $7 million in 2022, and we did 5.4 million in 2021. And we sold it in 2021, but we still actually run it. If you want to visit us, visit ilovethesun.com to learn more. I'm also the CEO of the Profitable Pineapple Ads Agency. We've helped, or we're on a mission to help 1,000 Amazon sellers scale to over a million dollars in profit while spending less time in their business. We don't just help anyone though, we help brands that have a bigger why in this world and that are trying to make a difference in it. We help brands by managing and building a moat around their Amazon listing. We also have an Amazon, a free Amazon PPC course where we teach you how we do it. And quite honestly, I just love helping other entrepreneurs achieve the success that we've had so they can focus on their bigger why. My superpowers include Amazon PPC and audience building, which is why you guys are here. So part one, the lander. Who do you serve? What are they trying to achieve? Are they trying to get out of hell, avoiding pain? Or are they trying to get to heaven and find pleasure? You need to know the answer to these questions to figure out how to serve them at the highest level. This is the biggest point of failure for Amazon sellers with this strategy. They don't know their audience. Let's talk about getting someone out of pain and then getting someone into pleasure. It's simple to think about getting someone out of pain. You're helping someone with obesity, headaches, migraines, dry eyes, joint pain, a difficult child, sleeplessness, debt, a failing business, Amazon PPC, or Amazon sales that are decreasing. Just think about the problem that you want to solve or the problem that your product solves. Now I want to tell you just a quick story about Beth. Beth was a patient of mine when I used to practice. And I remember when she first came in, she just came in for new glasses and contact lenses stating that her vision feels like it's gotten worse. So I changed that prescription and she went on her way. About a month later, she was back again saying her vision was worse again. I noticed another shift in her vision and instead of redoing her glasses and contacts, I referred her to a physician to get a physical due to, like due to a suspicion of diabetes. She never went. So two months after our initial appointment, she was hospitalized after she collapsed at home. She was in a diabetic crisis. She was diagnosed with diabetes, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol. After treatment in the hospital, her vision had changed once again, and I knew it would continue to change due to her diabetes fluctuations due to her starting to get treatment. We had her return every two weeks to adjust her prescription, and we addressed her dry eyes that had come on since all this started. She told me she couldn't wear makeup anymore. She told me her vision was fluctuating. She has trouble sleeping at night. Her eyes were always bloodshot. She didn't even want to leave her home anymore because she had trouble driving due to lack of confidence. She even admitted she started walking two miles to come to our appointments because she didn't feel safe driving. Now, I had brought up to the solutions to Beth in the past because I no started noticing these fluctuations and, you know, that hospital visit might have saved her life. Now, the reason I bring up this story is because Beth, going through this, had a lot of questions. And so, what kind of questions would Beth have asked? So, why is my vision fluctuating? What is a diabetic crisis? How to treat diabetes? How to treat high blood pressure? How to treat high cholesterol? Does diabetes cause dry eyes? 
And you know, she's not going to ask all these questions in her doctor's office. She's going to ask these to Google and she's going to find articles that are going to answer these. Now I answer most of these questions for her and I talked to her about a diet regimen, exercise protocol. Beth actually lost about a hundred pounds very quickly and she now actually runs and walks in half marathons. So pretty cool success story about her choosing a healthier life. But the reason I brought this example up is because look at all the questions that came up just from her basic history. And I could have gone into a lot more questions, but I just wanted to limit it to this. Now, conversely, getting someone to pleasure is making someone reach a status that is much higher than where they currently are. Now, we have two customers. So in I Love, we help postmenopausal females get out of the debilitating pain of dry eye by teaching them healthier habits and using healthier products that we sell in our clinic. At Profitable Pineapple, we serve Amazon sellers and brands who are trying to make the world a better place. And we do this by building a moat around their Amazon listing using Amazon PPC, Amazon DSP, and external traffic like Google Ads. So for this first section, your action items are who do you serve? Think about the problem that your product solves or think about the person that you want to serve. And I need you to write down as many problems that you can think of. Now here's some examples for dry eye. So dry eyes, blepharitis, inflamed eyelids, styes, loss of work, painful irritated eyes, dry flaky eyelids, eyelids that are stuck shut. For the Amazon seller, unprofitable ads, loss of rank, decreased sales, decreased profit, increased ad costs, lack of understanding of Amazon PPC, and no time to focus on advertising. All right, so let's jump into what the actual blog post is. So this is the landing page. We figured out who we're gonna serve. Now we need to answer those questions and make a blog post around these problems. The first thing we need to do is keyword research. So I wanna go over that process of doing keyword research for you. And it's very simple and we do it based on the problem that our product solves. Again, keywords around the problem that our product solves. So what we're going to do is just think about some problems that your problem solves. Go to Google Keyword Planner, hit discover new keywords, and type some of those in. So dry eyes, blepharitis, dry eye, and hit enter. It's going to come up with a lot of results, and I like to sort it by average monthly search value. And what I'm looking at here is I'm looking at a couple things. I want to see a low competition. I don't want to see a lot of people going after it. So you can see artificial tears. That is a product. That is what everybody's going after, high competition, higher bid. Whereas if you go after the problem, like blepharitis, you can see that bid in the top of page bid at 16 cents to $4, much lower than that. So let's focus on blepharitis for this example today. And we're gonna create a catchy title around that. So I like to make two types of titles, question titles and listicle titles. And question titles are just what it sounds like. What is blepharitis? How to treat blepharitis? What causes blepharitis? Listicles are, the Listicles are listicles, so they are lists of things. So I usually like to start out with an odd number, a superlative word, and then what the article is going to be about. Five best dry eye treatment tips, five best blepharitis masks. Those are two examples. Let's jump over to the Amazon seller space. What is Amazon PPC? What is Amazon Campaign Manager? Seven top tips for Amazon PPC. Three steps to building better headline search ads. After that, we're going to create an outline. And so Again, our keyword is going to be blepharitis, so three simple steps for better blepharitis management. And then our article is going to be, what is blepharitis? What are blepharitis causes? What are the treatment? And then in the treatment area, hopefully your product lies. We actually have a lot of products that help with blepharitis treatment. I'm not allowed to say that officially from the FDA, but for an example of this, we can. So our three simple steps are washing your eyelids and removing all your eye makeup at night with eyelid wipes, like our hydrate eyelid wipes. Wash your entire face with our Hydrate Tea Tree Face Foaming Wash. And then cleanse your eyelids with a hypochlorous acid eyelid cleanser. So three steps, we have all the products. If you don't have all the products that solve their problem, just become an affiliate for them and send them over to Amazon for that. But if you have a product, make sure your product is that number one up at the top. And then finally, just write it or hire someone to write it. I use things like Fiverr to hire content writers all the time. Um, my wife and I wrote quite a few of our articles just because we are, we are doctors, we are optometrists, so we wrote a lot about dry eye. And so, yeah, just write it. So your action items for this section is research your keywords, write your catchy title, outline your title, 
write your article or hire someone, post it to your blog. And I have more examples at profitablepineapple.com forward slash audience, where you'll, you can sign up for our free video series. So here's a couple examples for simple steps for flaky, itchy and red skin around your eyes. Five best eye makeup removers for dry, sensitive skin. Six reasons why sleeping in your eye makeup is making you look older. And when you're making these blogs, make sure you're taking advantage of Amazon's brand referral bonus. And so when you're linking your products in your blog, I like to send them away from Shopify because Shopify has a conversion rate of one to 3%. Whereas in Amazon, some of our products have a conversion rate of up to 50%. And so we send everything to Amazon and Amazon loves the external traffic. Amazon loves it so much. They're actually giving a 10% reward now when you sign up for the brand referral bonus program by Amazon. And so again, external traffic, it's, it boosts the algorithm in Amazon, but it will not convert as high as your traffic that is from Amazon. And the reason is, is because you're sending somebody from Google to a blog post to Amazon to buy. And so that, that's just going to be a lot lower because it's search marketing on Google for both information and for products. And so Amazon is strictly products. Facebook, on the other hand, is completely interruptive marketing. They're not even on there searching for whatever you're offering. They may just click it because you have an ad there. So how does this work? You generate an Amazon attribution tag, you add the tag to a campaign, and then you receive a bonus. It's that simple. So let's jump into your campaign manager. We're going to go down to that little bar graph, hit Amazon attribution. I like to name mine AA for Amazon attribution, whatever one we're on, so 30. Uh, for this one, we didn't do a blog post, but we did a $5 off tea tree soap cold. Um, I gave this example in the, the spring of how to make all this. But the key thing with this one is you make sure you add all on the page because you want to get credit and get that 10% for anything they buy of yours because they'll spill over and buy other products of yours as well, not just the product that you're advertising. So get that 10% bonus for everything and you want it to track everything as well. And then I like to use a canonical URL. Now, I don't like to use two separate black hats, but you're more than welcome to if you like to get caught by Amazon and get your account suspended. So completely up to you. We don't like to play that game, so we pretty much stick to white hat rules. So your action items for this is make an Amazon attribution link for your products on the blog post, add the links to the blog post. I also like to add a picture and like a check price and purchase on Amazon. Or if I have a deal going on like this one, we have 50% off our eye cream. I'll put a get 50% off on Amazon button, and then you can click over and buy that. All right, let's move on to part two. So part two, part one, we went over the landing page, building that blog post out making the title and then putting your links in for your products with an Amazon attribution link so you can track it. We'll go over tracking here in just a little bit. So traffic. And this is something that we've been using since 2017. This is how we've been able to build up our blog posts because we've been coming out with one blog post a week or one blog post a month. It just, we persistently came out with more and more blog posts and then we drove traffic to that. We didn't wait for the SEO algorithm to take place. We actually took control of our traffic and we pushed traffic to it with Google ads. So Google ads, we just do a simple Google ads to that blog post, whatever it's about with the keywords that we found during our initial research section. So you're going to choose a website traffic objective, a search campaign, and we're going to maximize for clicks. Now this is your most important step because you can drive a lot of traffic for a very low amount uh, on a cost per click basis. And so what I want you to do here, I'm gonna walk you through this. You're gonna log into Google. You're gonna pick website traffic. You're gonna pick search. And then this is just the naming convention. You can see all the ones I've named. I usually start with a five to $10 daily budget. You can start out with whatever you're comfortable with. And with bidding, we're gonna click on that clicks button. So what do you wanna optimize for? clicks. We want to get as many clicks. We want to get as much traffic as possible that will maximize you for clicks. I like to uncheck both of these. I don't like to go to Google search partners and we're not going to do display ads in this. You can do that at a later date and then pick your language, pick wherever you're advertising towards, and then put your keywords in that you researched right here. I like to put them in as broad phrase and exact. So I put all three in here and then we'll make our ads. So I think it asks you for site link extensions first. So a site link extension, I'll show you an example of this in just a little bit. It's just a short punchy ad that's gonna be under your ad. 
and you can do up to four of them per. So I recommend doing four of those and I recommend going straight to the products. So if you're advertising on Google for the blog post, have your site linking set just go to the products over to Amazon with an attribution link as well. So this is an example of a blog post though. I'm making a site link for a blog post. And then this is what the ad looks like as well. So number one recommendation on Amazon, this one's actually going straight to Amazon, but number one recommendation on Amazon for dry flaky eyelids, tea tree eyelid wipes. And then you can see all those site link extensions down below. And so you're just kind of giving a preview of what the blog is, trying to get them, to, trying to entice curiosity to get them to click over to your blog to read. And what this blog is serving as is just a landing page and a warm up page for them to go buy your product. So now we're gonna track your ads. And this is very simple. We're just gonna use a simple spreadsheet. Um, there are softwares that I haven't had a lot of success with, but um, the first one that comes to mind is Pixel Me. The only thing I don't like about Pixel Me is I can't do a date range and I don't feel like it's working as well as I want it to, um, but it may be in the future. So hopefully in the future, I'll have a different story. But all you do is we track this every two weeks. We put the spend for Google ads and we put the revenue made from the Amazon attribution link. We have a spreadsheet that's built in to automatically calculate the 10% referral bonus and it gives us a ROAS. And then that last line is where we put our changes. So if let's say it's spending a lot, but not making a lot, we'll actually put a max, max bid on the CPC. And I'll show you guys how to do that here in just a little bit. So yeah, optimizing these. If you're not profitable, you can go into the settings of your Google ad and of the actual ad itself in that campaign. And there's an area where it says maximize clicks. You can click maximize clicks and there's an area inside that that says what is the maximum you want to allow on the click and I would lower that. So it's un it, it doesn't have anything in there when we first start these campaigns, but if you notice it's not profitable, we'll want to put a max. And usually that max, I usually go about 10 to 20% below what the average cost per click was in Google Ads for that time period it wasn't profitable. If you're not getting impressions, make sure you check for approval and relevance. Google will not show it if you're not relevant. And of course, if they didn't approve it, they won't show it. Increase your bids if you have a maximum CPC set or if you have a maximum bid set. If you're getting impressions but no clicks, redo your ads because it's not relevant for what you're going after. And if you're getting impressions but no clicks, Google will actually, actually stop showing your ads eventually too. If you're running out of budget but hitting your ROAS goal, increase your budget. If you have lots of clicks but no sales, make sure your blog post is relevant for what you're bidding on or for the problem that the product solves. All right, so your action items for this one is build out 10 complete blogs and run Google ads to them. Now, why 10? Because six out of 10 will fail and will fall flat on their face. Three out of 10 will do okay, and one will go nuts. Start with a small budget. Start with $5 per day for each one and scale as you see fit. All right, part three, capturing the email. So when they've landed on your blog post or your landing page, the primary objective is to get them to buy your product on Amazon. Now our secondary objective is to get their email address. Giving your email address in return for something may not seem like a personal decision for us because we are internet marketing or we're internet marketers. But to your audience, this is a very personal thing. They don't want to get spammed by another company. So whatever you decide to give them, whether it be a listicle, a book, a coupon, it has to be 10 times the value of them giving you their email address. So what is the biggest problem that your product can solve? Again, what is the biggest problem your product can solve? It can be something as simple as a short PDF cheat sheet, a coupon for a product, or an ex as extensive as a free dry eye book or a free Amazon PPC course, which is what we give away at profitablepineapple.com. So again, I love, we're serving a postmenopausal dry eye sufferer. We're giving them a free rethinking dry eye treatment ebook that talks completely differently on how to treat your dry eye. For Profitable Pineapple, we're serving an Amazon seller. We're giving away a free Amazon PPC masterclass. If you're targeting weight loss, maybe a listicle that says five foods to eat to reduce belly fat. And if you're focused on wealth building, five money-making mistakes that you're making. 
So to get their email address, we're gonna add an exit intent pop and a banner across the bottom that tells them exactly what they're going to get and ask them for their email address. So again, exit intent pop, free dry eye book. Banner along the bottom, free dry eye book, just put your email address in. After submission, we have their email address and we'll follow up with them through our email sequence, which I'll get to in just a little bit. But you can direct them to a thank you page that discusses your product even more in debt and it also gives them the bonus. On this thank you page, also put Amazon attribution links to your products. All right, so let's talk about the email flow a little bit more. So they've put in their email address to get whatever you're giving away. Let's go back to that. A coupon, a book, a handout, a PDF, or anything that it provokes curiosity, a curiosity hook. Now they've given you your email, and this is where, where the magic can really start. With email, what you want to do is you don't just want to spam them, you want to serve them. And so what we want to do with this is we want to nurture them, and then we want to drip out the blogs to them. Now what this is going to create is it's going to create an email flow that produces external traffic to your Amazon listing in perpetuity. As long as you're getting new leads and new, bloods, new blood into your business, your business will never fail as a result. But as soon as you stop trying to get new leads, that's when your business will start to dry up. So with this email flow, the first email is going to be the giveaway, what they came for, and also just a, a small greeting. So if you're giving away a free dry eye book, here's your free dry eye book, or here's your free Amazon PPC course. And then let them know the story of how you created what you created. What is the pain that you are looking to overcome and portray it into a story? Now your call to action for this email that I like to do is reply to the email and also get the giveaway of course, but get them to reply to the email. The second one is just where you came from, how you came to do what you do. When did you have the epiphany moment that led to the creation of this? Call to action again is to reply to your email. The third one, what do you do and who is it for? What exactly do you do in the solution that you created? A call to action would be to reply to that email to inquire about it. Who do you do this for? Is who is this for? We help postmenopausal dry eye females. We help Amazon sellers that actually give a shit in this world and want to make the world a better place. So how do we do it for you? This is where you ask for the sale. So how do we do it for you? We offer, we have an Amazon PPC moat building service where we run your Amazon PPC, your DSP, and your Google Ads. I then like to have them follow me on other platforms to get even more leads out of them. So we have the email. We may want to try to get a text message, follow, them, follow us on YouTube, a Facebook group, TikTok, Instagram, wherever you are. Number six is how did, you learn, how, did, how did we learn it and earn it? So who taught us and how did we learn it? So this is a call to action to just reply to this email. I like to give credit of who my mentors were during this whole process of creating what we created. And then finally we get to the drip sequence, also called the Seinfeld sequence if you're a click funnel or if you're a funnel hacker. The Seinfeld sequence is just emails about nothing essentially. This is where you start dripping out your blog. And this will start out short. This will start out as seven emails, but every time you add a blog post, you're gonna add another email. Blog post, another email. Blog post, another email. So what this will do is it will create this, this ecosystem where you're driving traffic to your blog, getting people on the email, and then you're getting them to their, your other blogs as well. And then all the blogs drive traffic over to your Amazon for external traffic. Now, if you want examples of how I've written each one of these emails, I'd recommend going to sign up for my list and just sign up for my free Amazon PPC course, just so you can see what that's like. And that's at profitablepineapple.com. And you can just click free Amazon PPC course and just sign up for that. And you'll see these seven emails or more than seven, but the six emails that start and then the drip sequence after that. I also have it in my talking notes, which I'll give you here at the end. So now that we've got their email address and they're a part of our community, what do we want to do then? We want to, this is where a lot of people fall short is they don't follow up. So we've talked a little bit about the emails, but what else could we do? And I recommend that you wake up every morning and think to yourself, how you're gonna build and serve your audience. Again, we're not gonna spam. We're gonna build and we're gonna serve our audience. 
the more value you provide, the more sales you'll make. The more you spam, the fewer sales you make. So now that we've figured out the email sequence, what else can we do? We can create a gathering place. So this can be, again, Instagram, a Facebook group. That's my personal favorite. It's what we use most. A YouTube channel. Then we can post to that community or email blogs from other people to provide value. Again, we're just trying to provide value. And this is if you don't have your own blogs to email. You can then, and what I did is I created this easiest to hardest. Thirdly, you can write your own blogs and post them to that community and then email those blogs to your list as well. Fourth, you can record and post videos to these communities or YouTube channels. You can go live in the community or you, and you want to continually email them at least once a week. Now this is separate from the drip sequence. The drip sequence is just blogs and providing them value to get them back to your blog or your YouTube channel or whatever. I also write an email every week about what's going on in my life, what lessons I learned. It could have nothing to do with anything to do with Amazon or dry eye. It's just getting them to build a relationship with them. So when I run into people at conferences, they ask me how my kids are. They ask me how my wife is and they know things about me that a complete stranger would never know, but they've been following me for so long. They've, they've gotten to know me. So service, focus on service. So your action items for this is build that pop-up for the landing page to get their email address, build out your email flow and add blocks or excuse me, add blogs to the email flow as you make them. So just to recap, we're going to build a blog post around the problem that your product solves. We're then going to drive traffic with Google ads to that blog post, targeting the problem that your product solves. In that blog post, we're going to have attribution links that go over to Amazon. And then we're also going to create a pop-up and give away something to capture their email address to get them on our email list. All right, part four, retargeting ads. So pixels are, you know, they're going to be dead soon, but with pixels right now, you can retarget people who've landed on your page. And what I like to do is I like to retarget them with the same article that they were just reading. And I also like to target them with different articles around that same subject because three simple steps for blepharitis treatment. What is blepharitis is another article we could write. So similar, but different, but they'll have pretty much the same content. Now again, retargeting with pixels will probably be dead in the future, but take advantage of it now. And then there will be another thing. So just remember the principle of retargeting. You can do this with Google. You can do this with Facebook. And so I'm going to show you with Facebook and I'm just going to create a simple retargeting ad. So we're going to hit create ad. We're going to do traffic. And again, we're just going to name it AA30, whatever. So on that tracking sheet I showed you earlier, I'll just add another line under the Google for Facebook traffic. And then I'll combine those two ads to figure out my row ads for that. Now we need to create an audience and we're going to create a custom audience around your, your sources of being your website. And then we're going to do the, I love pixel cause you have to you put your pixel on your, your um, website. And you can do all website visitors or you can do just blog visitors. And I like to do around 30 days, but you can just test different things there. And then I like to start with, again, a $5, $10 a day budget. You don't have to start with much. So this is an example of an ad. Dry flaky eyelids can be so frustrating and they can really mess with your confidence. Seven best home remedies for dry flaky eyelids. Relief from dry flaky eyelids. That's all it is. And they just go to learn more. There's no product involved in here. There's nothing, there's no pitching a, pro, pitching a product, pitching a sale. It's just getting them over to a blog article that then talks about the seven best home remedies. And guess what? Over half of those are our products. So some Facebook troubleshooting. If you're not profitable, lots of clicks, but no sales, pick a new audience to target. In this case, we're retargeting people that are already engaged with you. So it should be pretty good off the bat. If you're not getting impressions, make sure your ads approved. If you're getting impressions, but no clicks, redo your ads and look at your audience targeting. If you're getting impressions, but no clicks, make your ads flashier. Don't be afraid to do like a pink backdrop or something like that. If you're running out of budget, but hitting ROAS goals, 
increase your budget. So what I want you to do is build out one Facebook ad retargeting, excuse me, one Facebook ad, one Facebook retargeting ad per week or per month, depending on how many blogs you have around the same problem. So we make a blog, we drive Google traffic to it. We put the pop-up on there. We try to get their email address. We then create a Facebook ad around that same blog to retarget people that have been on our blog before. We make another blog. We drive Google traffic to that. We then make a Facebook ad around that blog and then target people that have been on your blog before. So you can see how this starts to build up, but it doesn't have to be all done at once. You just have to do one at a time. All right, so to recap this whole thing, blog post around the problem that your product solves. Then we're gonna drive Google traffic to it. We're then gonna to try to capture their email with an exit intent pop or a banner across your, the bottom of your thing. Then we're gonna retarget them with Facebook ads. You can also do this with Google display ads, but I didn't get into that today. But Facebook retargeting ads to go back to those same blog posts. And as you add, and when you repeat this, you keep adding more traffic to your blog, you keep adding more retargeting audience, and you keep adding more audience or ad creative as you're adding more blogs as well. So in conclusion, I want to talk about persistence. And like everything in life, persistence is key. When people ask me how we became so successful, I always tell them, we decided early on that no matter how tough times would get, we would continue doing what we believed. We'd find our audience, postmenopausal dry eye sufferers, and we'd serve them at the highest level to get them out of the pain, or in other cases, help them find pleasure. Now, regardless if Amazon suspends us, or we're out of stock, or we have a lawsuit with a big pharmaceutical company, or we lose our life savings to a Ponzi scheme. These are all true stories, by the way. Or anything else that happens in life. Regardless of all this, we persist through it and keep doing what we were put on this planet to do, which was heal one million dry eye sufferers naturally. That's our why, and that's why we wake up every day thinking about how we can do that. If you stick to this strategy of coming out with one blog post per week, or even just one per month, driving traffic to it, retargeting those visitors to get them on an email follow-up list and continue to serve them at the highest level, you will succeed. You're sending a ton of traffic, not only to your blog then, but then your blog sending a ton of external traffic to Amazon as well. This will boost your rankings and create a flywheel that cannot be stopped and will make you invincible on Amazon. Now for every 10 blog posts you write, one will do amazing, three will just do okay, and six will kind of flop. Just keep going. You've got this. If you have any questions for me, my email is right there, drtravis at profitablepineapple.com. Now, I have a free audience building course at profitablepineapple.com forward slash audience, including one more ninja hack that I did not include on this presentation because I didn't think I had the time to. So if you want that one last ninja hack, sign up for my free course. There's literally no obligation. You sign up for my free course, you go on my drip campaign. You're gonna see exactly what we do, what I just taught. So free audience building course, profitablepineapple.com forward slash audience. If you want my free Amazon PPC course and some other bonuses of other keynotes that I've done in the past, profitablepineapple.com forward slash bonus. Thanks for visiting. Amazon PPC may seem like a complex subject, but it doesn't have to be, and that is why we created this channel. On top of Amazon PPC, we're going to share different tactics and strategies that we've used to build a multi-million dollar business, as well as the strategies that we're using to build a $100 million company, which is our goal. We don't know how we're going to get there yet, but that's our goal, and we want to take you along for the ride. So make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell to be notified whenever we come out with great business building and the Amazon PPC strategies.